Hey guys, so I get a lot of questions about affordable motion capture and in this vlog I'm going to answer some of them. If you look at motion capture traditionally, it was used and still is used by a lot of big companies with big budgets. These are AAA gaming studios or film studios who can afford to spend 50 to 100k on a motion capture system and get very accurate motion capture for their films or their animation. Now, over the last few years, there has also been the whole concept of affordable motion capture, which allows mid to small size studios to engage in motion capture. Some of the motion capture suits here are Rococo, Perception Neuron, and Xsense. I use Rococo, so my focus is going to be more on Rococo suits. Now, most of the range in terms of budget is anywhere between 2.5 to 10K, and it really depends on whether you want to use it for your animation systems or for previs or for any other virtual production. But it is important to know when you invest in one of these suits, what are you getting in return? So first things first, given that it is affordable, do not go in expecting you will get the same results as you would if you paid 50K to 100K for a motion capture system. The whole point of affordable motion capture is to be an intermediary system in your process. Now, as a person who's not an animator, there's no way I could build an animation such as this without help. But as you can see, I need to clean this up too. And eventually, if I want it to look super duper good, I would need an animator in my team to work with these animations that I've created with the mocap suit. Now, for me, the big advantage of a mocap suit is that it gets other people involved in the process of animation. It gets other people from the team involved in the process of performance because the days of animating something from scratch are gone. This can be a very rigorous process and also with the crunch system in many industries, this is normally not an advisable process. We need to find better softwares to bridge gaps in production which are causing people to burn out. Now, one big tip if you're using Rococo, I highly encourage you to use a dedicated router. I was having a lot of issues when I was using it in my home Wi-Fi the motion capture data was really not good, the character was imbalanced, but as soon as I started using a dedicated router, a lot of things got a lot cleaner. Now, another cool feature of all motion capture systems which are affordable at this point of time is they have the live link system. What does the live link system do? It essentially links your motion capture suit to a 3D model you might have in any other program like Unreal, iClone or Unity. As an example, you can see here. Hey, look at me. Cosplaying here as Tyrion Lannister. I got my face capture on and I also have my body capture. Pretty fluid, huh? Not bad, not bad. So you can see that, you know, I do have karate hands which I can clean up later. It's no big deal. But to get a likeness of a character, the teeth, the eyes, the movements wow i can do this sitting at my home and i can also proclaim that game of thrones season 3 was terrible absolutely terrible super cool all of that was done in real time super cool and after that i can clean up and polish off all the roughness so this really helps in terms of timelines, in terms of making people in the whole team understand the same vision of the product you're going for. And at some point in the next three to five years, I do see these systems progressing and getting better so that the data that you capture from one system to the other gets a lot more fluid, where the cleanup even gets a lot lesser. Now then, what are some of the things you need to keep in mind if you're going to invest in one of these systems? First things first, it is not going to give you 100% of the animation that you really desire. As you can see with my hands and a lot of these animations, they are like karate hands. Now, Rococo is coming up with a Rococo glove, which will resolve this, or you can manually tweak it later on during cleanup. But of course, ideally, I would like to have my hands functional because that's such an important part of expression. Now, the other thing, as I said, is don't invest in these systems expecting that you remove the entire animation process or you won't need animator. In fact, the big idea here is to make the animator's life easier, to make the production life easier and get more people involved in the process. Another thing, be ready to troubleshoot. There are going to be a lot of trial and error process during the capture. 
Also, I highly recommend if you're ever doing mocap, have three to four people in the room. This is so that the performer can be left alone to focus on the performance, whereas others handle the technicalities. So hopefully I could give you a good idea about what affordable mocap could look like. And to end this video, I'll end it with my mocap avatar. Hey, so you can see here, you can see my face, and you can even see my teeth, you can see my legs, you can see my hands if I need to do, uh, let's say, pose. Hey, what's up? So pretty cool stuff. And, uh, you know, if this can be used in games, it can be used in simulation and a variety of things. For example, if I'm having to do a scene in terms of conversation between two characters, I can see how it looks when I pull the chair, I sit down, and then I argue. No, that's not how I want it. Get out. But this should not be the primary way of working through LiveLink, because as you can see, there's still a lot of cleanup needed. Uh, there are a lot of things that can go wrong, but it's a great way to test your character even against an environment. Let me just adjust, adjust this. So you can see this is actually extremely uh, great for the whole team to get into. And hopefully uh, you enjoyed this vlog and yeah, please do start more tapping soon. Bye.